Welcome again to another Noontime with Nick, and we have some special guests today. We have David Williams, as well as Lance Finley, who's our Executive Director from the General Conference out in Finley, Ohio. We welcome all of you today, and as we've done in the past, if you have any questions, we ask that you would please put them in the question and answer section, and you're welcome to chat amongst yourselves on the uh, webinar chat that's available to you. So, this morning, Dave's going to open us up with some scripture and some prayer and some thoughts um, about our season that we're currently in. Yeah, God directed me to yesterday when I was asked to do this to Joshua chapter 1. It's a time of transition for the Israelites. And just hear these words. Joshua 1.1 1, 1 says, After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' is aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people, Get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I'll skip down to verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong. And very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. <clears throat> so in this time of transition, be strong, be courageous, be about what God has called us to be. So let's pray. Father God, we're grateful for these words of comfort that are so true that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, just as you were with Moses, just as you were with Joshua during this time, of their time of transition. You are with us in these changing days. Give us strength to see where you are at and the courage to go where you will lead us. Thank you, God, for always being present, for the opportunity just to serve you today. In the wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Um, so uh, a couple of things for today. Um, we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about soul care, and that's I asked Dave to be on the call this morning as a participant to, to talk about that. But a couple of things that I just want to say to those on the call. First of all, thank you for your persistence through all this, through the wisdom and leadership that you've shared through all this. Um, you know, it, I know it, it was really a little bit um, um, tumultuous, I guess is the word, maybe, in the early days where we were trying to figure out, oh, my goodness, we can't meet on Sunday. What are we doing? And then it was sort of like, well, now we know we can't meet. So I just want to thank you all for being flexible and, and uh, uh, you know, accommodating the idea that we do have a responsibility to respect the authority over us and that it is actually for the general good that we're trying to separate ourselves. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, I know that challenge will come up again and probably cause a little bit of tension as Easter approaches. And um, maybe we've come to terms with normal Sundays, but now as we enter the high holy seasons, it's like, wow, now, now that there's another sense of wrestling that's going to take place. Um, but I just want to, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you for, for um, being the church at this moment, for actually, you know, understanding that it is important for us to, to reflect a good image to our society that, um, you know, when the governor says stay at home, we should stay at home, uh, where I had a conversation with a pastor the other day where, you know, was asking about um, more or less in a general sense, what does the church life look like? And, and in my mind, in my, my counsel to him was, you know, hey, we have every right to continue essential services, right? We have every right to do the things that are truly, truly important. Um, you know, when, when somebody calls you and they're in pain as a pastor, yeah, it's okay to meet with them. Yeah, it's okay to figure out how to, to gather. Um, there are going to be some difficult situations, and, and part of the reason why this whole care issue I think is important today is, now, I don't know how many churches have faced a death in their church um, and having to, to uh, care for families um, when you can't really touch those families, but know this, that the spirit of the law is keeping people safe, and there are going to be moments where we do have to gather because people need that. Like, and when I say they need that, there's something going on in their life where they need their pastor, they need their shepherd. And, and those are good. We, we can do that. Um, but in terms of the broader public gatherings, that's where we have to be careful and say, hey, 
not an essential function. And, um, you know, what message are we sending to our neighbors if we, if we choose to do that when it's not an essential function? So it, it's pretty simple right now. I mean, we're loving our neighbor as best we can. We want to keep our neighbors and our families safe. And, and that's kind of where we are. So uh, we choose to obey the governor's order and we choose to stay at home and, and separate. So I thank you all for showing leadership in, in that capacity. Um, everybody's doing a good job and I know it creates stress and it creates um, some discomfort among people um, but at the same time I just want to thank you for that you're doing a great job uh, one of the things I think I'm going to I'm going to shift to and, and to get Dave in here is this idea that a recurring theme in this moment as I'm with people is how tired everybody is how how staying at home and being segregated has, has created this 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 sense of <laughs> in some ways working harder because rhythms are disrupted and, and you know now all of a sudden I'm not only a pastor I'm also a full-time teacher of my kids or you know all of a sudden my wife and I are spending a lot of time together and we're not used to that um, so the idea of um, this draining situation that we're in you know you got to look to care for yourself and certainly if you're going to be teaching the gospel you have to make sure that you're treating your family the way they need to be treated so in all these things that you're wrestling with, um, just be cautious and careful and, and, and loving and hopeful and faithful um, in terms of the gospel, in terms of how you're acting. Uh, and, and one thought I'd throw out there to you is, as you are feeling this, this tension and this, this uh, maybe exhaustion, think about the things that you're wrestling with that are really a matter of comfort, but not necessarily essential in this moment. So I'll, I'll go back to that. You know, if you're stressing out right now over not being able to meet on Easter Sunday, come to terms with that and wrestle with it. But let that let that stress go because that's the reality of the moment. You're not going to be able to meet on Sunday. So more so turn that attention and that energy towards how can we honor Easter through loving our congregations and our people. What does that look like? And, and, you know, that's probably a better use of energy. But I think a lot of what we're going through is stress that if we really take time to think about it, um, there are things that we can't do anything about. So let's move on to the things that we can. Uh, and with that, Dave, I'm going to, I'm going to let you talk a little bit um, about soul care. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a stressful two weeks and we've been living on adrenaline for that time, learning new things, trying to figure out how to, how to use a camera, how to do Zoom meetings, and, and, and we can run on adrenaline for a while, but after a while, that that just goes away, and you can crash and you're burning that. So I, I want to encourage you to, to just to take some time to slow down and, and to rest, because God's put that cycle into our lives. You know, He did create in six days, and the seventh day He created rest because we need it. And so just keep remembering that 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 rhythm that we do need rest. And even throughout the day, we need to just take some time to get away from this. The other day we had, I sat in front of my laptop on Zoom for three hours, almost straight. And by the time I was done with that, it's just kind of like, I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't realize that sitting in front of a computer was so stressful and so draining. But it is just trying to make sure you look okay and you're okay and you're not doing this or that. But just got to walk away sometimes, you know, be sure to take your time just to to read your Bible, to journal, to, to pray, to just just be, uh, just to take care of your soul. Just uh, sometimes, you know, Don and I have been going out for a lot more walks, you know, and so in the evening, we look forward to that, just to go out and walk around the neighborhood and see what's going on there and just to slow down. Some days it's been raining, so we haven't been able to do that, and so we found some other ways. Uh, sometimes you just got to, close this thing, turn the thing off and, and just, you know, maybe read a book or just sit and be in silence and just spend some time with God just to read the Bible just for fun and not, not for the sermon, not for a Bible study, not to get something out of it for someone else, but just to get something for yourself because God wants to talk to you today. He really does. Yeah, he wants to develop that friendship. So use this time to take some extra time just to spend with yourself, uh, just to sit in silence. Hey, take a nap. You got permission to take a nap, okay? If you need it, because I know that my schedule is out of whack. We've been staying up later, getting up, or the other night, 
at one o'clock, God, you gave me decided, decided to give me a whole bunch of ideas of things we could do in the future. And then about three o'clock, I could get back to sleep. And now I'm still feeling it. And I'm like, okay, take a nap might be a good thing. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I'll talk about fasting, fasting from the junk food. And that's something that maybe we should be fasting from for this time. Yeah, sometimes we go to that. You know, I've used food as my uh, place of safety and security too. And that's something I'm trying to just get away from for this season and find some other things. So I do have some pretty good peanut butter eggs out there that I'm going to feast on at some point in time. <laughs> so I was able to snag some from Pembroke before they got shut down. So thanks, Mark. Yeah, I guess that's just, just keep on asking, you know, how's your, okay, I'll ask this question. Some of the pastors hate me to ask, how's your soul? Just to ponder that today. How is your soul? And what are you doing to allow the spirit work on it and to deal with it? So. It's good because, you know, like, do you feel that right there where there's silence where like, can we be comfortable with silence? Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and, and know that if you do take time to just be silent before God, the first voices you hear are the crazy ones uh, because we're so used to the noise that when we finally get silent, that's when Satan will really start kicking in other voices that aren't real. And so if you take some time to be silent, just be aware of that. First time I did that, that drove me crazy. I didn't know what was going on. And then later on I learned... Uh, some stuff through Henry now and that, uh, you know, the, the monkeys chirp and those demons cry out because Satan doesn't want you to spend time alone with God. Good stuff, Dave. Um, I guess one thing I want to add to that too, because I think there might be some people struggling out there. Um, as pastors, your mission has changed, right? Um <laughs> You're at home now, and, and it is important as pastors to understand that you're, look, throw the clock out. Like, it's, this is not, this is not office hours at the church. This is not, you know, as, as we're throwing out the other stuff, we're throwing that out too. You're now at home working um, and carrying out the mission of the church in a far different way. I uh, heard a conversation within the last two days about, um, <coughs> a church laying off their pastor. And I really, like, I really had to think, or, and it, not that they were doing it, but they were, I guess they were pondering it. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, a church laying off its pastor. That's the same thing as a church closing its doors. So there are no layoffs of pastors. The, the mission has shifted. Um, and so the mindset needs to change too. This is not, you know, if anything, this is, the idea of um, pastors not being hourly employees on steroids, they're not. They're not hourly employees. They're shepherds. Uh, and in a moment of crisis, their need is greater than ever. Uh, so just the fact that they're not necessarily preaching, and I know a lot of you are preaching on Sunday mornings, but, you know, Monday through Friday, you're probably making more phone calls now than you've made in the past. You're probably doing things. You're, 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 you're pondering strategically what does the church look like. You're doing all these things. Your mission has shifted. It hasn't ended. Um, and so I want you all to be thinking, too, about any stress that might be caused by, well, you know, I'm collecting a paycheck, and I'm not sitting in my office. Praise God. <laughs> Your mission has shifted. Embrace that, right? What are the things that you need to be doing right now to be a good shepherd, a good teacher to your box? Um, and sitting in your office is not one of them. So that's another thing. Be released. Be free in that moment. Don't, don't sweat that one out either. Uh, uh, you know, Dave, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that or not. Well, yeah, I, that's another point that I was wanting to make and kind of forgot earlier. It, it's find ways to serve, you know, and you can serve by making some phone calls, doing some Zoom calls. But even when you, you go to the grocery store and, and do buy those, those foods, you know, thank the, the person who's wiping down their grocery cart or the person who's there. Or when you go to the uh, sheet store, the Speedway or wherever you're going to these in your area to just to get gas, just to thank those people who are there. Um, 
Yeah, so find some ways to serve. Do the church. Yeah. Um, go ahead, Colleen. I was going to say, and that gives you great joy, you know, and yeah. it takes you out of, you know, some of the things that you're personally struggling, struggling with. Um, because some of the comments, guys, while you guys were talking, you know, where some people aren't tired, they're a little frustrated, you know, and so that's mm-hmm. a real emotion and, and very yeah. true. You know, it's been a little disappointment in the body where uh, Don Snyder's church is not allowed to, not currently, they've had to cancel their um, drive-in church for now with fire police getting involved, I guess, and those kinds of things. Okay. But, you know, there's also really great suggestions out there too. And Tim, Bre- Tim Beislein had talked about, um, there's a website called prayasyougo.org. He said that's a good resource uh, to keep your soul care good. And uh, um, I'm not sure what that is, but you, know, you might want to check that out too. So, um, yeah. Another thing, and you talk about the, the losses. And yesterday I, I filmed a, a session on laments. And we're going to be putting that out on constant contact because people are experiencing a lot of different losses. Some of them are small. Some of them are large. Some of them are going to be a whole lot larger as we start having people and friends and prisoners die from, from this. And we, we need to grieve. And David grieved a lot. 42 out of the 150 Psalms are, are laments. Uh, there's a whole book called Lamentations. So it's appropriate for us. And without doing the whole lesson now, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> Well, and there's, there's a question that came up and maybe Lance, the, you can speak to this or Nick, I don't know if you've heard of any people, but um, are there any churches that are seriously considering laying off their pastors? Um, are there things we could do as other congregations to help avoid that happening? I think we have thoughts on that. Yeah, so I, I'm just going to lead into Lance and basically say, I'm going to be addressing that more fully uh, probably after his comments, but I'll let him open that up. But more, more generally, Lance, uh, and that question is not going to go away. Mm-hmm. Let's say that. Uh, Lance, you have any perspectives you want to bring to the table from the general conference? Because again, you, you take a look at not only the individual churches, but the foreign ministries and all that sort of thing as well. I mean, anything you want to share? Y- yeah. So, you know, that's, I, I, I think, um, you know, one of the questions that some churches are asking, I mean, you know, so we're all different. There, there are some churches I know of that um, have hit these last couple weeks and stayed pretty close to staying on budget with, you know, income coming in. Uh, I know other churches that that's fallen off the cliff and um, some churches that have reserves, other churches that live, you know, week to week. And, and so that is a real question, I think, in lots of places of how do we pay our pastor and, you know, how, how do we continue to keep, you know, the bills paid? Um, I'm not aware uh, of anybody who's like, you know, called and asked, how, how do we lay off a pat? I mean, I've, nothing like that's come across uh, my way, but I know, you know, as this stretches, that's going to be an issue in some places. And, um, you know, as far as the world picture, I mean, you know, everywhere I know now is experiencing some level of this lockdown. So we know in Haiti, as best as they're able to lock down Haiti, it's supposed to be locked down. um, Not very successfully from what I'm hearing. Uh, India and Bangladesh are going through the same thing we are. Um, You know, Brazil, I think is, is getting close to that. Um, Central America, again, right. Seeing cases rise. And many of our brothers and sisters in places like that don't have this kind of technology and um, certainly their people don't. So while we're finding ways to make do in this time, this, this is really disruptive in those places. So, um, you know, I think there are, are great concerns there. It's interesting. Tim Beislein just commented, and this is, this is a brilliant, a brilliant thing for us as a body of believers that, um, they're shifting their culture to see that their staff is their greatest resource. And really every business, well, we're not a business, every ministry should look at their staff as their greatest asset. And um, they're doing that. They said, he said that they'll stop their trash service and shut off water and lights before they lay off their staff. Amen. So, you know, and I think if we are in the people business, then we should really communicate mm-hmm. that. Yeah, it's good. 
I know of one pastor who the church was on had had some difficulties in the finances even before this that the, uh, he offered to the council that if need be, you know, I'll take time off or you can cut me or I'll find another place to go if that needs be. So he made that offer to them just to talk about it. You know, something I've talked with a group of pastors we meet with, we've talked about, you know, what's the possibility of doing bivocational or co-vocational somehow that maybe not the week before Easter, we go find an, a second job, but how do we find other income so that we can take care of our own family's needs, but still release some of the financial pressure on the church, but even more so, it becomes an opportunity for us to invest in the community and make contacts with people who are outside the church right now, and we can be the church. You know, and I also, I believe it's an opportunity for the body of Christ, the faith community that we are. We start looking at churches that are near us, not as competition, but as, as, as one. And if you have resources that another one doesn't, why don't we think generously towards those, you know, in our neighborhoods? I mean, because I know we have a lot of very small churches that a lot of them have a lot of resources that they could help one that's hurting. So let's be thinking in that regard, you know, uh, with the resources that God's blessed us with, you know, how can we be a blessing, you know, to those nearby? So that's important in the season. Yeah. And, and that really takes me to where I wanted to go. And Lance, if, you know, we're going to let you come back in here if we, if we didn't let you speak everything that you wanted to share. But the idea of in this, this is an amazing moment for the church to rise up and be the church. This is an amazing moment for us to say, it's never been about the building. It's about the faith. It's about following Christ's call. It's about being the hands of feet of Jesus. And with that, um, comes this message of generosity and i know that it's been a struggle for, forever people for some reason people don't like to talk about you know oh i don't want to talk about tithing i don't want to talk about generosity and and uh, and i get it it's i mean fine. it's hard to talk about people's finances it is um but in this moment we have to care for one another we we like we actually have to look at it and if the church does happen to come on financial you know struggles um yeah, and I, it's thoughtful, but we need to build a plan around that. We have to come to each other's aid. Um, we have to figure out how the ERC serves to protect. And and when I say that, don't, I mean, think about it. Like, what are the necessary finances? I like what Tim said. You know, we'll cut trash, we'll cut water before we cut people. Okay, yeah, there are cuts that may have to happen as tithes diminish. Um, but the last thing we're going to do is we're not going to cut the shepherds. We're not going to. We're not going to cut the gospel message. We're not going to cut the evangelists. We're not. We're, we're not going to cut the service networks. Um, and and I say that there, there's a hard reality that some people have to understand. Um, and, and I and I get the depth of it because I'm living it. And that is we're not we're not on a career path. We're in a calling. And so if income, you know, I say this I shouldn't probably say this out loud, but if income goes away, I'm still going to be in this role like i'm still going to do this role without pay <laughs> and i may need to find a way to feed my family because as all of you have known if you can look at my face food is important to me right um <laughs> so I, I do enjoy eating uh and i get the struggles that people are going through and that's you know i think it goes back to the acts passage where they sold everything that they owned and they took care of each other's needs that's the season we're in right now mm -hmm. um we've given up our comfort you know, and I say that we've given up that routine, uh, that rhythm that we were comfortable in. We've done that. There may be other sacrifices that have to get made along the way. But at the end of the day, in this moment, we do have to be the church. We can't even begin to say in a secular way, well, we can't afford it, so therefore it can't happen anymore. No, the mission of God continues. And, and we, are, we are the ones that carry that forward. And right now, God has given us an amazing opportunity to live out what we say we believe. And so we have to do that. Um, but I would say this, you are, none of you are alone. Um, if you get into a financial dire situation, reach out to us, reach out to another church where you have comfort, reach out to your lead team, do that. You're not alone. This is the family of God. And that's what we are going to be in this moment. This is a moment for us to prove what we say we believe. And we have to do that. Um, this is so cool, Nick. I have to tell this testimony that just came through the chat. 
Tim, uh, Tim Beislein was communicating that they've been using their missions fund to meet needs in their area. Oh, wow. And God is just like sending <laughs> checks back in, you know? So this is how it works. You pour out. I mean, God's resources are endless. You, you become a river rather than a reservoir. This is what he does. And so that's a very, very great testimony from uh, the Landisville Church of God. That's awesome. And the question becomes, do you believe that? It's the faith piece. Do you actually believe that? You've right. taught it, you've preached it. Do you believe it? And right. and now's the moment to test it. This is the time for us to be, this That's is the right. time more so than ever for us to live out our faith. Do you right. believe the promises? Right. And so, the thing about it is, are you doing it yourself personally? You know, um, you know, so are you looking into your community about places where you can be a generous person? You know, it it it's about you as a just a a a faith believe a believer in Jesus is he in you that deeply that you'll pour out resources um, where you see need it's awesome uh, one of the other things when it comes to finances I want to just you know we're not at a place where we can talk about this at great length but I know conversations are going on so the care act you know this idea of of the church taking government money that is very much availed to them um, what I'm going to ask of you is I want you prayerfully considering that and I want you, you know, to really uh, probably think about that more deeply than most people would on the surface level. Um, what does it mean for us to take money, even though it's available? What does it mean to us to take government money at this moment? Um, and I'm not going to get into the details. Uh, it's a conversation that I do believe we're going to have to have at some point down the road. But I know churches are already thinking about it. So think about that, but think about it in terms of the 2,000-year tradition of the church. Think about it in terms of how does that speak into um, teaching about us as a Christian community and our generosity with one another. Um, you know, in other words, do we turn to the government or do we turn to ourselves, our family? Uh, and what does it mean? What are we willing to say that in this moment of crisis, if we're willing to take government money, when they come back to us later and say, okay, now we need you, what are you willing to do? So, you know, because whether there's change on that money or not, there are, you know, whether it's stated or not, there are. So I want you to be thinking about that as we move forward in this process. And there is a lot of learning that has to take place. Um, we don't know all the details of the CARE Act, um, but we're learning it quickly. And I just want you to be, be careful as you, as you go down that road, it's more than just saying, okay, we qualify, we're going to take it. There's a lot of, of thought that should go into that process. You and your leadership teams really should be thinking about it. Is that your best pathway? Um, and ultimately, we really have to, as a community, come together and really think about this idea, how far are we willing to go to support one another in this moment? How far are we willing to go to be good neighbors to our fellow churches? Um, you know, I, I believe that there's more than enough resources because I believe in a generous God that's going to just bless. Uh, I do believe that. So think about it. You know, don't just jump into anything quickly. We'll keep you informed about what's going on on the CARE Act. And, and uh, you know, Frank Harvey's on a, on a call right now yeah. learning about it. So uh, we and I think Colleen and Frank have been on probably several this week. Yeah. You'll be committed to prayer. I really think that you as a leadership team, you know, if you're aware about it, uh, aware of it, uh, that it should be a matter of prayer because um, everybody's going to have an opinion. Yeah. The one thing I would ask of you is do not, don't enter into that lightly. No. I mean, you know, and I think the natural course would be, Hey, when he's available, let's do this. Don't enter into that lightly. This is a major moment. Pray about that. Mm -hmm. Talk about it with your leadership teams. Filter it through scripture. Um, and at the end of the day, if you, you, whatever your decision is, that's good. But at least you put that heart and soul and thought into it. You've asked God what we should do. Um, but this is absolutely not a moment for us to make a quick decision because it's the easy choice. Mm -hmm. So just, just be careful with that. Um, Lance, do you want to add anything on the CARE Act in particular and anything else you want to add? No, I, I just think you bring some great wisdom to this. Of I, I think um, there's initial reaction of, oh, good, the government's here to save us. And again, for some folks that, you know, as you pray through, I mean, we're all different. Everybody's in a different situation. There may be some places that that's just the route that they're going to have to, to go to navigate this. But I think it is a moment of, you know, 
how's God going to provide in, in this moment? Do we, we trust him? Um, are, are we able to step up? I mean, I think, I think it was actually on, um, you know, Chuck and Rich's uh, Tuesday morning show that I think Lawrence was the one who shared that they've already got a couple of folks who have called who said, Hey, we're getting these stimulus checks. We don't need it. Um, is there a way we can use this to help somebody else? And, you know, I, I'll be honest, that's, you know, one of the few times we're having three kids pays off pretty good. Um, at, at this moment, I don't need that money. And how do I use that to bless somebody else that's in need? I, yep. I think Likewise. that's how God's people need to start thinking in this moment right. rather than just looking, yeah. um, you know, oh, good, the government's going to save us. Like I said, that that may be the route a congregation has to, to choose, yeah. but um, I I appreciate your call to, to think about, you know, who do we trust here? And is this a point where God uh, wants us to lean into him and to trust him more? So, That's good. Uh, Another point that we made at our staff meeting yesterday was that maybe one of the things that churches can do with that is that as we become aware, there may be small business owners in our, in our congregations and help them understand a little bit or get them connected with it that may be a way that we can help other people as they bridge this time through yeah there's a, there are a couple other things that that came up in the <laughs> chat that um uh i had i had one question privately and this is kind of on a totally other not a financial subject um is there some stipulation in the um in our doctrine that okay if people want to do home communion with themselves, does it have to be given by like an ordained person or, uh, you know, or are they allowed to do communion at home? Is there a rule, some rule? I'm going to let the pastor speak that one. I, don't know yeah. what I, do I mean, because I don't have a problem with it, but I'm a lay person, so. It would have nothing to do with the, our doctrine. It would just right. be common sense of having scripture. Right. I know. Yeah. At one point in time, I said we would have said that, yeah, a pastor has to give the words of institution and okay. I kind of like that, but I'm not that hard and fast on that. Okay. I do know that some of our, our pastors are talking about or telling your people to, Hey, get the elements, get the juice, get the bread, have it ready. Cause at such and such a time we're going to have it. You know, I'm going to lead us through that okay. ordinance. And yeah, like, so I know one of the pastors going to do that. And I'm probably going to join them on that zoom meeting. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and, and um, understanding that in this moment, I'm not saying that parents are now pastors. So when I say pastor parents, I'm really saying in this in this moment of urgency where, where where parents find themselves in the role of teaching their kids every day, break bread with your kids. You know, go through the communion process with your kids. Honor scripture. Yeah. Honor. You know, this is a whole different moment. Um, you know, this is this is a moment to actually show your children and teach your children. It's not about the building. It's not about the Sunday morning. It's about every day. And we're going to break bread and we're going to celebrate the word of God in this house. Um, you know, God bless you all, you know, do that. Yeah, that's good. I, I think, it, and a couple people have noted it in the comments I've seen, that this is a moment for, the, for us to fully embrace the priesthood of all believers. Yeah. That over time, I think um, we slip into some places where maybe – we didn't mean to slip into uh, in our traditions and in our ways of doing things. But uh, I remember Jesus saying, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Yeah. And um, yeah. that there's something about even when we break bread, um, there's that idea of gathering, remembering him all the time. So uh, I, I think we need to lean into this moment. I think the spirit of God is, is drawing us to some good places. I think it'll be extra sweet, you know, just really extra sweet. Thank you for that, Lance. Yeah, that's right. I even think it'd be a pop opportunity for the pastor to do some some teachings on it and just send out some stuff, you know, via email to the parishioners. Here's the, here's the basic words that we would use if we were all gathered, and here's how you could do it with your family. Mm -hmm. yes. And read from First Corinthians eleven, and then say this as you take the bread, pray over it. Here's some more words. Here's what you do when you have the cup. Just some. Yeah. You know, more broadly, too, I, and I, I say this is such an amazing time where 
those that take the responsibility of their faith greatly, you know, deeply and want to share it with their kids. This is a great time for pastors to be reaching out, teaching parents. Okay, here's some of the struggles you might, here's a look at this opportunity. Here's your teaching moment. Here's your curriculum. Here's your teaching moment, man. This is a great opportunity for you to show that it's more than words. It's actually, you know, it's who you are. Uh, so in, in all that we're doing and all that we're seeing, I, I realize that probably none of us like this moment all that much. It's, it's created a lot of chaos. Um, but it is an amazing opportunity for us to learn, to grow, to live out our faith, um, to embrace the reality of the moment. And, and as Dave mentioned earlier, man, oh man, when's the last time you took a nap in the afternoon? Go take one, right? I mean, like, it's an amazing opportunity for us to reset our internal clocks and say, maybe this is what life should look like. Maybe those things I was doing before had me in a unhealthy place. So when we talk about the ERC strategic plan, healthy pastors, you have a clean slate right now to be a healthy pastor. What does that mean? Embrace it. Don't wrestle with what you can't do any longer. Don't wrestle with what we've done in the past. If anything, look at it in this moment and say, how can I really serve my congregation? How can I love my congregation? How can I love my family better than I've loved them for some time? How can I love my parents more? Um, God's speaking right now, and there's so much opportunity. And, and, you know, what we have to do is get past sort of that negative and look towards this moment. God, God is giving us a blessing also. What is it? What is he saying to us in this moment? So, anyway. Um, I have had this um, asked of me before, you know, is, is the region and the denomination for that point uh, thinking about calling us to a day of prayer and fasting? I, I, the short answer is I haven't to this point. I think that's a great idea. I, I'm connected with a couple of different fellowships that, um, it, like yesterday, they were doing a, a daylight fast that I, I joined in. Um, and so um, I, I'll be with our team tomorrow virtually, and we'll probably talk through that some okay. because uh, I, I think that's a, a great idea. We just... Uh, weren't that on the ball. Right. Well, there's been I've a lot. I've pondered it. I've just been too stressed over other things to say, let's go do this. Right. Okay. It was just, it just came up a couple times. So I thought I'd, I'd, I'd point that out. I know we're already past the, the 1230 hour for sure, but I, one other thing I'd like to just remind you of and, and really think about this, you know, we spend so much time talking about what does discipleship look like and what does leadership development look like? And we, we, we come at it from a, from a, a thought process, from a, from a strategic process. Well, guess what? You know what discipleship is and leadership is? It's rising to the occasion. And so in this moment, what I would, argue, what I would, what it would say to you is true leaders are being revealed in this moment. True disciples of Christ are being revealed in this moment. Help people as pastors, help people to see that right now what's being revealed to all of us is um, – Maybe, maybe this is our time to take a look and see what our actual maturity in Christ is. Maybe this is a time, and not to, not to regret what we see necessarily, but to learn from it. From to actually say, okay, now I'm being tested. Like, this is my moment. Am I being the church? Do I understand what it means? It's an awesome opportunity. But when it comes to leadership development and, and discipleship, it really does come down to how do you act? at the moment where God's calling you to live, right? There's a training element for sure, but there's also just a, 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 a pondering moment, a time to actually reflect, a time to sit back and go, God, I don't know what you're doing right now, but I'm coming humbly before you to ask, what is it? What are you revealing to me? And, and those are the moments where we really have to focus. That's the direction we have to focus our attention. Um, you know, stop wrestling with what was, stop wrestling with, you know, there's a new normal. And we we're not going to know what that new normal is going forward, but we do what we do know what the new normal is in this moment, right? We do know that we're going to spend a lot more time on Zoom than we are face to face with people. We know that. Let the stress go, and figure out in that in that venue what does it mean for me to be a good shepherd? What does it mean for me to be a good teacher? What does it mean for me to cast a good example to my to my congregants in terms of what it means? It's a wonderful opportunity for us to truly live into it's not the building. Is it? Are you sure it's not the building? Now's the time to test that. 
If it's not the building, it's not the building. How do we live in community outside of the building? How do we continue to make sure that we have strong support groups going that if we weren't here, they would continue to share the gospel? This is an incredible moment, people. You know, turn your attention towards the positive. Um, there'll be plenty of negative and there'll be plenty of hurts and there'll be plenty of stress moments. And, and we, even in those moments, need to come together as the church. Um, it's not going to be easy necessarily, but boy, this is actually an opportunity. It's a gift from God if we live into it properly. So keep it positive. Keep it above board. Stop worrying about what you're worried about. It. You know, don't stress out over what, you know, what is the latest news and, and oh my goodness, what does it mean? We're all shut in our houses now. You know, okay, we're shutting our houses now. Okay, God, what does that mean? How can I be a positive force if we're shutting our house? How can I honor neighbors? How, you know, I have this incredible desire to go hang balloons on everybody's mailbox just to make them smile for a moment, right? How, it could be as simple as that. What does it mean to love your congregation, love your flock, and love your neighbors, and love your family? Because this is an incredible opportunity. So, and I hope we all embrace that and not the discomfort that we're feeling. That's good. Good. Well, how about if I give us a couple announcements for uh, next week? Uh, we have two webinars coming up. And what does it look like now? This is Monday morning at 9 o'clock. Diane Hakes and Mike Schooley will be reconvening at 9 a.m. What does it look like now for students, children, and families? And then on Tuesday morning, uh, the 7th at 10, um, it's going to be a panel discussion about personal ministry response during crisis, and it's going to have uh, Charlie Yost and Dwight Lefevre and Tom Gardner. Uh, so we welcome you to um, be a part of that. What I'm doing now is on our website on the homepage, there's a space you can go to to click on the links for the webinars, and then there's also a space you can go to and click on uh, to find the Zoom for the Noontime with Nick. And uh, we've decided that those noontime sessions are on Mondays and Thursdays. So I think that's, did I miss anything then? Uh, um, uh, Diane said Stacy Reber, I guess, is going to be the panelist for um, Monday. Oh, good. Okay. Good to know. All right. I'll add her. Excellent. Um, if anybody has anything else? No? I, I would just... Uh encourage you all i you know i to kind of circle back to to where dave started um how much i appreciate all of you and just the hard work you're doing i kind of chuckle at social media because a lot of my friends uh you know are seeing this as a time where life has slowed down and it's a different and it's certainly a different pace for all of us but a lot of my friends in ministry i don't feel like it slowed down much and actually uh, feel pretty weary and exhausted. And um, this whole self-care piece, I think, is important. Um, one of the questions I, I brought to friends recently uh, is uh, take some time to think about what COVID-19 has taken from you mm -hmm. uh, because it, it has taken something from us. We're all grieving different things and we're all going to grieve more things to come. Um, and, and that's real. And some of this tiredness and weariness is, um, you know, grief working its way yeah. through us that uh, you need to pay attention to. Uh, the, the flip side of that is what has COVID-19 given you? Um, that, you know, in this, we've all found blessings of more family time, or uh, we appreciate the outdoors now when we're able, you know, any number of things, but that God is actually in his grace giving us things through this crisis and probably the big question is just, you know, what is Jesus wanting to do in you through this? Um, that, you know, regardless of how we're reacting, some of us are still anxious or frustrated or uh, hoping that we get back to normal as quickly as possible. Uh, one of the things that I've come to rest in is just the fact that in this season, Jesus wants to accomplish his work in me and just trying to to lean into him and say, Lord, what is it that you want to do in me in this season that when we get through this, I'm going to be a different person mm -hmm. in the way I live and the way I see you, in the way I love people. And so I just thought that might be a, a good place to take people as we close is 
Um, you know, that self-care piece is important, but if, if you haven't taken the time to say, what, what has this cost me? What have I lost? Uh, what am I grieving that maybe I haven't even named that yet? Take some time this week to do that. Take some time to celebrate what is being given to me in this, because th there are blessings through this that uh, we can find when we look through the stress and the anxiety and some of the pain that we're experiencing. Good. And and don't let uh, don't let this moment um, be lost either. One of the things that came out of the um, the webinar the other day was one of our churches told their staff journal journal through this as things move you as thoughts come into your mind make sure you write them down because the last thing you want to do is go through you know one two months of pain three months of pain and lose every lesson that was taught to you so take time journal write write your thoughts down. Um, in terms of how this might impact the future. Uh, and with that, I think, uh, I think we'll honor people. We've already gone way over. Um, so simply to say, again, Monday meeting, um, we'll be back together. And I believe we've decided that Monday will be an open meeting again, right? Mondays are open and Thursdays are going to look more like this. Right. So uh, you'll have an opportunity to bring questions and, and interact with us on Monday. Um, and we look forward to seeing you. Have a great weekend. And Colleen, anything else? No, I, how about if we pray? Amen. Okay. Oh, Father God, we just, we thank you so much for who you are, your goodness, your love, your never ending resources. Father, we thank you for this resource of Zoom. We praise you that we are able to connect in this fashion. And so, Father, I pray that you would be with all of us that, as Lance said, you know, what is it, what is this showing me about myself and how can I be a different person um, as we move through it and as we keep our eyes on you? And so, Father, I pray that you would change us, that we would never go back to the old ways, Lord. We just want to be so connected to you that we see more of you. And we know that in a storm, we can see more of you if we keep our eyes on you. So, Father, give us the uh, wisdom to know how to navigate. Give us the heart to want to seek and do the things that only you want us to do. Give us rest, as Dave talked about. I pray, Father, that you would help us to uh, take care of the soul that you've in, put inside of us. Help us to rest. So, Father, we thank you for this time together. Be with us as we go through the rest of our week, that we would honor you and keep us safe and healthy. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.